So we are just waiting on the first contest to start in this excellent bout of IBA champions tonight here live on YouTube. Fighters will just be warming up now, doing their final pieces of preparation before making their entrances to the ring. Ladies and 
gentlemen, we are now ready to welcome our next contest. It will be five three-minute rounds in the welterweight division, so please welcome first to the ring from Moldova, Alexandru Parashiv. Alexandru Parashiv from, from Moldova. 67 kilogram welterweight division. One of the most exciting divisions in world boxing. Alexander Parashev, 24 years old, the champion from Moldova. His opponent tonight will be Lasha Guruli from Georgia. And now please welcome his opponent coming into the goal. This promises to be a really exciting bout. Five three minute round contest. Division. Your officials, referee from Afghanistan will be Tamim Sultani. Your judges will be from Argentina, Italy, Hungary, the Czech Republic and England. And now it's time to meet the boxers. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the black corner. He weighed in at 66.45 kilograms. His amateur record. 32 wins against only 15 defeats from Chisnau, Moldova. Please welcome Alexandru Parashiv. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the gold corner. He weighed in at 66.5 kilograms. An outstanding amateur record. 
62 wins against only 22 defeats from Rustavi, Georgia. Please welcome Lasha Garuli. Gentlemen, head up, no holding, no low blow. Shake your hands, good luck. Well, as you can see straight away here from the start, the Moldovan boxer is a southpaw, leading with the right hand. And Grushelli, orthodox with the white gloves and the white shorts. Jab from Gorilla, still trying to find his distance. Parashev, oh, lovely right hand there! Fantastic shot from Gorilla. Parashev seems to have recovered very well. That was a very, very good flash knockdown there. Head up. From the man in white. No holding. No holding, boxer. Parashev still hasn't found his distance. Not finding the target just yet. Gurley looking far more comfortable. Georgia have a very strong history of boxing. Some fantastic boxers through every weight class over many years. And this looks to, to be a continuing trend. It's Lasha Gorilli. Looks in total control here in the first round, including that very good flash knockdown that he scored. That's the 10 second clapper that you can hear. But this round has certainly been controlled by the man in white. Including that very good flash knockdown. Possibly a potential 10-8 round there for Gorilla. Parashev decides to stand, he doesn't take a seat. Unfortunately, I can't speak Moldovan, so I can't translate what the corner is saying, but there's that flash right hand that he dropped over. And as you can see, his counter punching was very precise as well. Very, very good right hand there. Parashev was on his way back, which didn't help matters. Very first, very good first round from, from Lasha Gurili from Georgia.
Parashev seems to be a little bit out of distance with that left left hand as well. Has to try and find his range a little bit more with his with his front hand, with his lead hand. He's not had much success landing his, his lead hand, so he's not going to have much success with his backhand as Biruli is controlling the distance and the tempo of this fight up to now. Nice counter punch in again from Gorilla. Just checking Parashev with that left hook counter as he comes, advances towards the man in white. Really has very good judgment of distance, just slides out of range when Parashev advances. And he's always poised for that counter punch. As you can see, he's, he's gaining confidence as well as the bout progresses, dropping his hands, swaying back out of range of punches. Very impressive performance so far from the man in white from Georgia. Another good right hand over the top. Parashev switches to orthodox to see if he can have some success in that stance because he's had very little success in the southpaw stance so far. Decides to switch back now. Good cross to the body from Parashev. He's having a little bit more success now. He's possibly throwing Gorilla off a little bit with switching orthodox and then going back to southpaw. Oh, good right hand again from Gorilla. 10 second clapper again. I feel this is another Gurelli round here. Parashev starting round three a little bit quicker than he did the second round with that right jab and he's having some success with that. Good start to the round from the man in black. I'm quite sure that his corner would have liked him to start like this in round one with a sharp effective jab. Of course a great way to find your distance but again he walks into a really good right hand counter there 
from Gorilli, who's a very accurate and sharp counter puncher. Maybe he finished a little bit more comfortable. Oh, seems to have been a little injury there somewhere. Difficult to, to actually see what happened there. I'm sure maybe there was a small collision with Gorelli's elbow. But this is the most success that Parachev has had so far. He's having a good round three. I think it's possibly more to do with the fact that Gorelli was very, very comfortable in round two and he's maybe just taking his foot off the gas a little bit but it lands a good right hand there gets a response from Parashev who continues to advance he's not lost any heart he's certainly still very much in this contest had success with that looping overhand right many times now as well the man in white Gorilla from Georgia Parashev has started to neglect his jab a little bit that he was having a lot of success with in the earlier part of this round but this has certainly been his best round so far Nice right hand again from the man in white from Georgia. But most definitely Parashev's most effective round so far. He had success with the jab in the early part, the first minute or so of the round. I'm sure, I'm sure his corner will be a little bit happier with his performance in round three. And they'll be hoping that he can build on that start again from Parashev. He's definitely had more success and found more of a rhythm as this contest has progressed. Good left hand there. Trying to build on the success that he had in round three. He caught that shot on the palm of his left glove there and seems to be gaining a little bit momentum now although he runs into a great right hand and takes a standing count from Gorilla that was very well picked that was unfortunate as well for Parashev as he's really started to break his way into this contest and look quite good over the last two rounds in spells and that was really unfortunate for him there to 
run into that. It's really good right hand counter from the slick counter puncher from Georgia. Nice jab from Gorelli there. The favour was returned from Parashev, who's definitely has no problems with determination or his heart, his desire is very, very good. Lovely body shot there from the man in black with his backhand, with the left hand. He whipped it right under the, the right elbow of Gorelli there. And I think Gorelli felt that shot. He's backing up and looking to hold. Parashev again having more success than he did in round one and two. Good round again from the man in black. More success. And was really unfortunate to have received that standing count because he really did perform well over the fourth round there. Has definitely improved as this contest has progressed. That really unfortunate standing count there. As we come up for the last round now, I'm quite sure Gorilla is confident that he has a lead. Will be interesting to see how he approaches this final round. We know that Parashev really has to work very, very hard here to to secure a victory, because I would imagine if the judges are seeing what I'm seeing, he's a couple of rounds down here, maybe three rounds down. So he probably needs a very, very big fifth and final round to secure this victory. I'm sure the man in white from Georgia will be looking to score another big right hand counter punch. Counter jab from Gorelli, but takes a left hand in return. Overreaching with the right hand. Punch for punch here, really. No one's quite got hold of this round, round five yet. Both men trading off. The man in white coming off best. Lovely right uppercut there. From Parashev. Still pressing, still looking to to force the action. Nice left hand there. Having lots of success over the last three th three rounds. And little spells, little bursts. 
he's just not been able to maintain that pressure and cause Guerrilla real difficulty here. He's still very, very much in control of this contest. Despite the man in black forcing the action. Good right hand there from Guerrilla. Tries it again with no success the second time. Last 10, and I think the man in white is going to be successful here. Looking to hold. Barashev has pressed the action throughout. You have to admire his, his work ethic and his desire and his will to win, but he just didn't have the skill set in the end for me to pick up that victory over this man here. Who scored a good knockdown plus a standing count and really did control the distance of this contest although this man pressed him very very hard over the last three rounds but in my opinion just not enough to win this verdict judges scorecards where we have a unanimous decision for your winner in the gold corner just Lata as I expected Burrulli. deserved good performance Marco from Guerrilla now will hand out the ceremonial certificates to both boxers the knockdown and the standing count I would assume counted for a lot in this contest because there was nothing wrong with Alexander Grashvili's aggression and work ethic. He tried very, very hard throughout that contest. Very, very good first contest of the night. Fantastic first contest to start the night there. Very, very impressive. Lots of skills on show from both men. Parashev decided to start fast but had taken that big right hand which set him back massively. Bit of a flash knockdown. He recovered very well, and he pressed. He pressed the contest throughout, which was very, very impressive. But just ran into one too many counter punches. Well, 
This is a contest that I'm very, very excited about. Gladys Kraus from the Netherlands, 22 years old, who actually, my son, Alex Arthur Jr., has had regular sparring contests with. Picking up some invaluable experience from Gradis, who tonight is up against a very formidable opponent in Arlen Lopez. This looks to be an excellent contest. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest, five three-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Your officials, the referee from Hungary, Veronica Suj. Your judges at ringside from Afghanistan, Argentina, the Czech Republic, England, and Italy. And now it's time to meet the boxers, introducing to you first. Fighting out of the black corner, weighing in at 79.7 kilograms. His record, 18 wins against only 15 defeats. A decorated amateur boxer from the Netherlands. A silver medalist in the EUBC Games, please welcome Gurados Kraus. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the gold corner, weighing in at 79.2 kilograms. An outstanding record, 156 wins to his name against only 26 losses. He is a two-time Olympic champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Cuba, Arlen Lopez. Good luck. Gentlemen, keep your head up, no holding, no low blow. Shake hands. Good luck. Well, this promises to be an excellent contest, one which I've been particularly looking forward to myself. former trainer of world heavyweight champion Tyson Fury and father of former world amateur champion Huey Fury, Peter Fury ringside to see this contest as well friends with the, the Kraus family so he has good support here as well Peter Fury a fantastic trainer Gradis in the black for me has to be very very busy with his jab try to stay to the right and he has to try to, to counter Lopez's counter punches essentially which is easier said than done 
against these fantastic Cuban boxers with unbelievable flair and skill, tremendous ability, unbelievable judgment to distance. Their punch variety is exceptional as well. And more importantly, they always find room to punch no matter where they are in the ring. I'm a massive believer in success, breeds success in boxing. And Cuba have certainly had a great deal of success over the past 40 or so years. Thinking back to Barcelona in 1992 where they captured eight gold medals when Olympic boxing was absolutely thriving. And IBA of course doing a great job in bringing that back. Good cross there from Lopez. As you can see he's a southpaw. Right hand forward. Gradis Kraus in the black has to make sure that he keeps his left hand a little bit higher. Having a low guard against the Cuban is never the, the best way to approach a contest against masters of judgment and distance. Nice little flurry there. From Gradis. Good jab from Lopez. Almost looks like he's out of distance sometimes, but still finding the target. This is what you get from the Cubans. Nice jab there from Gradis, but he takes a jab in return. Bit of a game of cat and mouse here. A very quick first round. But that's what happens when you get the quality of these two competitors. Good start there from Gradis. A little bit more active, slightly more aggressive than he was in the first round. Nice body shot there from the man in black. Whipped that left hook right under the right elbow of Lopez. lead right uppercut there from Lopez Lopez still hasn't really quite found his rhythm something that you see quite often from the Cubans it's not a fast start but a very accurate start they set the stall right away they get right behind their jab they find their distance very quickly and they make it very difficult for you to get back into the contest And that's what Gradis Kraus doesn't want to allow to happen here. Good head movement from Kraus there. Picking his shots and slipping and sliding in and out of range.
Nice right hand from Kraus again. The man in black grown in confidence, certainly, and rightly so, because he's had a few bouts of success in this round, mixing up his combinations, but still by no means controlling matters here. And sometimes you do get the feeling when you're up against a world-class Cuban that they're just having a good look at you and they're measuring you just to see what they can catch you with. Once you start to gain confidence, they like to take it away from you quite quickly. Good right hook there from Lopez. Not being overly busy with his jab. Cubans love to establish their jab and make their mark really quite early and they get all their punches off lovely fluid rhythmic movement and good jabs Hear Peter Fury <laughs> yelling from the ringside there on Crouch to go to the body. It's not bad information at all. Coached by his father, who I believe is a former world kickboxing champion and, and a boxing champion as well. Father son relationships in boxing, of course, are very, very successful normally. Especially if the father is a successful former boxer. There's lots to pass on to their son and the son will always listen, or normally will always listen to a father. More than someone that they don't know so well. Great punch picking there from Lopez. The jab followed by the left uppercut. And even though he has disadvantages in height, still managing to land shots like that just shows you the class the Cubans. Another good body shot there from Kraus. Landed a few good effective body shots and that will help towards the, the latter part of this contest. And I'm sure that's the tactics of the Dutch corner just to maybe slow Lopez down as the bout goes on and for the younger, more energetic Kraus to pick up the pace. Another lovely double left hook to the body. Really good, effective body punching. I must remember as well, Gradis Kraus is 22 years old. And performing very, very well here, considering Lopez's experience. You heard the announcer say he's had over 150 amateur contests. Takes a good left hand there, though, from Lopez. Who does seem to be... Just finding the range a little bit more than he was in the first and second round. Not to the point, in my opinion, that it's become an alarming, but Gradis Kraus here is most certainly being tagged with a couple of more shots, but he's very much still in this contest. And like I mentioned earlier, those body shots might come into play. They might work for him later on. They'll be hoping that Lopez slows down 
somewhat considerably and the younger more athletic looking young man in black can put his foot on the gas and have a big finish lovely counter punch in there classic southpaw backhand from Lopez who's not the easiest guy in the world to catch with a clean head shot like most Cubans very slippery great movement for the waist a lot of natural rhythm caught up with a good backhand counter there from Kraus nice show of mutual respect from both men there at the end of that third round a lot of quality on show here Grad is not breathing too heavy in the corner there, looks very, very fit. Physically as well in great condition. Round four underway. Gradis Kraus on the front feet straight away here. Looking to establish his dominance. Nice body shot again. I can testify that he's a very good body puncher. In sparring with my son, Alex Arthur Jr. E. Alex said he felt a, a lot of Gradis' body shot. Said he's a very good body puncher. This is fantastic experience for him regardless. And with one of the best operators in IBA boxing and Alan Lopez. Nice right uppercut there. From Kraus. Timed that very, very well. Nice right hand from Kraus there, sharp and straight. Good job from Lopez. Lopez starting to look ominously uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable here, I should say. If you know the Cubans and you know how they operate, you can see they start to build a rhythm for themselves and create a real a real flow they almost they almost box like they're listening to music in their heads technically beautiful they've always got fantastic punch variety and like I mentioned earlier as well they always are in a position to punch no matter where they are where they're dancing if they're being aggressive they always seem to be able to get shots off and fantastic naturally gifted counter punchers And of course, the success that their country's had over the years just builds because they continuously bring in the former champions 
from their country to work with the current boxers. The classic old story and success breeds success. A real, real superpower in boxing. And Olympic style boxing, particularly. A fantastic experience for this young man, only 22 years old, competing at this at this level. It's remarkable, really, and more than holding his own. Nice double jab from Kraus. Good, good start to the fifth round here from Kraus, letting his hands go fluidly. I was very, very fortunate to work with Olympic silver medalist, fantastic world champion Wayne McCulloch from Ireland. And he always maintained that the best way to box against the Cubans was give them lots of pressure and lots of volume and to counter everything that they countered, which takes a lot of energy and a lot of confidence in your own ability as well. And I guess that comes with years of experience, something that Gradis Krauss doesn't have on his side really, considering his uh, background of um, a fighting family. But as I said earlier, he's more than held his own here and doing very, very well. Landed some really good body shots. But you can just see Lopez's class coming through a little bit here. Trying to catch a little break there, a little rest. Lopez rolling from the hips. Good body shot again from from Gradis. A really good body puncher he is. Good body shot back from Lopez there. That left uppercut under the rib. Both men looking to finish strong. footwork there from Lopez as well he's one two from Gradis less than half a minute to go now Lopez switching up to orthodox goes back to southpaw he really can do it all the Cubans nice leaping jumping jab there an effective shot for a southpaw Something again that comes with experience. And again. But the young man for the Netherlands hasn't done himself any harm here at all. He really has done very, very well. Considering the level of opposition he was up against there. Remarkable stuff from the 22 year old. But I just have the feeling that Lopez has edged this one out. But in reality, it's a no-lose situation for Gradis Kraus.
You see some of the shots there from Lopez, very, very effective. Let's see what the judges have got to say. contestants in the ring. We go to your judges' scorecards where we have a split decision in favor of your winner in the black corner. Whoa! Fantastic! Well, I had it 3-2 to the Cuban. But that is a fantastic win for Gradis Kraus from the Netherlands there. The, ceremonial certificates to both boxes. the judges must have preferred the more active body punching of Gradis Kraus. His work rate was probably a little bit higher. But for me, I had the Cuban three rounds to two up. But very, very happy for this young man. What a victory. And that will boost his confidence somewhat. Unbelievable victory. And there he is with his father, who I'm sure is very, very proud. Ladies and gentlemen, before I announce the next contest, let me please remind you of our proud sponsors for this evening, Bet Boom Company, Gold Caravan, and My Group. We are now ready for our next contest, so let me introduce to you the boxers, introducing to you first into the black corner from Italy, Salvatore Cavallaro. Salvatore Cavallaro from Italy. And now please welcome his opponent into the goal corner from Kazakhstan, Nurkant Reis. And that tries 23 years old from Kazakhstan. Very rich history in Olympic style boxing. Continuously produce real world class Olympic style boxers. And of course professional boxers as well. The fantastic treble G Gennady Ganovko and knowing the world over. 
one of the greatest middleweight world champions there has ever been. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is five three-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Your officials, referee from England, Lee Innes. Your judges from the Czech Republic, Afghanistan, Italy, Argentina, and Hungary. Gold. Boys, heads up. No holding. Punches up. Listen to me. Good luck. Thank you. And now it's time for me to introduce the boxers. Introducing first in the black corner. He weighed in at 74.7 kilograms, 105 amateur bouts to his name with 70 wins. He is the Italian World Championships bronze medalist from Sicilia, Italy, Salvatore Cavallaro. And his opponent across the ring in the gold corner. He weighed in at 74.9 kilograms. His amateur record, 24 wins, only 12 defeats. He is the Asian Championships runner-up from Kazakhstan. Please welcome Nurkan Trahis. It's up. No holding. Punch is up. Listen to me. Punch up. Well, if you're familiar with Olympic style boxing and you've been watching and competing in it as, as many years as I have, you, you actually become familiar with the boxer styles from the country that they come from. You can often just tell where a boxer comes from based on the way that he boxes, which sounds a little bit complex, but this is most certainly the case. And I know that the thousands of amateur or Olympic style boxers that are listening to this um, tournament here tonight, this fantastic tournament in Monaco, will understand exactly what I'm talking about. And here you see the classic Kazakh style of the high lead hand, sharp, snappy jabs, wide stance footwork. Normally, quite aggressive and the Italian style is normally quite flamboyant very unorthodox a little bit ungainly they like to move around in different positions and try to let's say steal punches without sounding disrespectful but of course they've had some great success in Olympic style boxing over the years and will continue to naturally very confident people nice feet work from the man in black no holding Think. Step back, step back, step back. No holding. Hold on. Watch your heads. Stop. Play that's not a follow complete. 
Che devi fare? Che? Tre, oh. Va bene, tre colpi poi. Sì, poi. Quando fai l'azione, porta attivo, porti il montante, gancio, montante e gancio. E gancio, l'uscita. E il terzo che devi entrare, capito? Vai sciolto e tieni oh, la frequenza così. alta dei colpi. E subito rientro, sa? E subito rientro, fa? Cavallaro trying to draw the lead there from Rias, but being met by the counter punches as well. Go. Listen, no holding. Listen, no holding. the jab there the man in white Rias from Kazakhstan trying to get a reaction of a response from Cavallaro with the hope that he's maybe going to overreach so he can run him into a counter shot although he is the more aggressive operator here Cavallaro looking to counter punch here and having success as well. Rayas feet look a little bit laden, a little bit heavy. He's just not getting his feet in the range. Falling short with the shots a little bit. Head up, gold, head up. Oh, lovely right hook there from Cavallaro. And another nice check jab. And a one-two. He's really finding his rhythm a little bit better here in round two than Rias, who's still not quite caught to up there, but that's a very stiff right hand. Cavallaro seems a little bit unsettled there, just as he was having a little bit of success. He runs on a good right hand, well-timed right hand. Rias put him in a very good position there to drop that shot in. With a nice bit of weight as well. He's having success with some head shots now. Watch your heads, watch your heads, boys. Stop! Not the best decision from Stop! Cavallaro to hey, go training with this listen. guy. Stop, stop boxing, yep. No wrestling, no wrestling. Box! Referee making his point there that he doesn't want any roughhouse tactics from the no Italian. Holding, Stop! Cavallaro seems to have lost his way ever so slightly here. Just as it looked like he was having a little bit of success, Rias has really heads, came back heads. into this contest. No holding. Looked like his feet were a little bit laden and his uh, his hands were moving a little bit quicker than his feet, but everything seems to have caught up now. There's a good right hand as well from Rias and a good left hook as well. Cavallaro is looking a little bit uncomfortable here. Consider there's another three rounds to go on top of this. We only have 15 seconds left. Well, that, bout was, that round was cut short. There was still 14, 15 seconds left in that round that was on the clock. Why it was cut short, I don't know. But the timekeeper certainly did ring that bell on my clock here. And on the clock on the screen, 16 seconds short. Just when Rias looked to be gaining a little bit of momentum and landing some heavy shots. Caballero was pretty fortunate there for that bell to ring. This is where the right hand, the left foot comes in. Just prior to that stumble. They were 
took much to take him down there, really. Hey, come on, listen. Hey, come on. Hey, listen, okay? Sit there. Both guys just falling short a little bit. Still trying to assert the dominance. <laughs> Ryan's just having a little break, having a little look at Cavaliero there. Deciding not to throw any punches. Maybe feels like he needs a little break in the action. Pawn the, the right jab there, Caballero, to try and land a one, two, three. Nice jab from Rias, another nice jab. Feet and hands going together there. What a pop on that jab there. Another good jab from Rias. It's a fantastic jab when he gets it working. And it comes from an extended left hand. It doesn't have that far to travel. Tries for the right hand through the middle there. That little break that Rias had a minute or so ago was possibly just to have a look at Caballero, just to see what openings he could exploit. And a good right hand again. Stop! Step back. Don't turn down, don't turn down. Bugs! Oh, nice counter punching from Caballero there. No effect on Rias, who looks teak tough. This jab from Caballero. You always want to see a southpaw establish that jab really quickly. They make life so much easier for themselves if they get their jab going. And just learn how to drift off to the right, but that was a much better round from Rias there. And I believe him and the Kazakhstan corner will feel that they really gained a bit of ground there on that. And I think this man has it all to do over the next two rounds. Because going by that second round, third round, it looks like Rias is really starting to find his ground and land his shots when he chooses to land them. He's getting his feet into distance. He's, he's got a very sharp, sharp, used a very sharp jab there. Decided to take a little break in that round as well. There's a nice lead right hand. A bloody lip there as well. From the man in black and gold. Keep listening, yes. Keep listening. Step back. Step back a bit. Step back. Stop! Step back. Go turn around. 
Hux. No hold in black. Break. Step back. Stop. Break. Got a lot of trying to time Hux. the jab of the man in white there with his backhand. It's a nice sharp double jab. You just do have the feeling that Rias has got the control of this contest, though. Okay, okay, step back. This is turning into a bit of a physical conversation. No words needed, of course, in the boxing ring. And it seems like Rias is just gaining a little bit of an upper hand here. Look, Cavallaro's having little bouts of success. Nice one, too. Let go, let go, let go. Go. From the man in white there, from Stop. Kazakhstan. Watch your head. Stop! Step back. Head up. Bucks! Break! Step back, boys. Step back. Let go. Hugs on. Edge up, gold, edge up. No holding, boys. Stop! Step back. Bucks. No holding, boys. No holding. Break! Step back, boys. Step back. Come, break. Step back. Bucks. Nice right hand there from Rias. Took a little bounce in his step. I could just see that he was looking to detonate something quite big there just with the, the feet work that he used. A little step in, a little skip in, a little skip out. He dropped in that nice heavy one too. Cavalier was still firing back, but no as much menace as it was earlier. Another riotous round for me there. You see some of the replays there, there's that one-two as I mentioned earlier, they just took a little bounce in his step to detonate that one-two. Old school trick really. Give your opponent the idea that you're just having a little bit of a break, a little bit of a bounce. Try and reset your legs and then you spring into action with a nice chart combination. Keep listening, stop holding. Step and watch your head. for both guys to keep working and rightly so taking up, little breaks up, up close there up, Black. stop stop holding stop holding understand Bugs. referee not happy with Cavalero's dip into the head of course can always cause infringements stop. and 
head clashes which don't normally end that well if a fighter's eyebrow is in line with his opponent's forehead almost almost results in a cut which is something that no one wants really don't want contests in calibre cut short <laughs> I'm sure that everyone wants to see every round that, that happens and goes by here with the quality and calibre of this fantastic IBA night of champions Come on, Ed, up. Bucks. He's done a very good job, the referee here tonight. I know it's probably irritating a lot of listeners. He's actually done a very, very good job in keeping both fighters safe. And uncut to keep this bout as clean as it could because this is the type of bout that can get very messy. Anyone that knows the sporty boxing well will understand that southpaws, a southpaw versus an orth orthodox boxer can often result in some nasty head clashes because of the position of their lead hands of course styles come into play as well Watch your heads, watch your heads. Heads coming dangerously close again. And as someone who, who's been cut a number of times in the professional ring, I know how disrupting it is to a contest. And there is blood streaming from the nose with Rias there. Although I do not think that came from a punch. I'm sure that was from a clash of heads. Cavaliero seemed to be getting his head down at that last minute. Rias had a little bit of a height advantage, so that normally can go against the boxer who is in danger of getting cut. But another top class contest there with two very contrasting styles. Both guys having success, but for me, Rai has done enough to secure a victory there. But I got the last contest wrong, and I must say I very rarely get the result of a contest wrong, but... The last contest, Graus and Arlen Lopez was very, very close, and could have went either way. Winner of this contest, let me please welcome to the ring the IBA Sports Director. Marco Petric to pre, uh, give the fighters their ceremonial certificates. And ladies and gentlemen, how about a hand for both of our boxers in the ring here? Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges' scorecards where we have a split decision. In favor Whoa. of your winner, in the black corner, representing wow. in Italy, wow. Salvatore Cavallaro. <laughs> IBA Sports Director Marco Petric now to hand out the ceremonial certificates, ladies and gentlemen. Well, again, a very, very close contest. One in which I had Rias 3-2 up. But again, very, very close. Judges can have diametrically opposed views. Some judges like some certain style of boxing. Some judges like others. For me, personally, I preferred Rias' aggression. I liked his... Uh, his control with his left hand, I think he landed the more effective punches. But again, no argument, really, because, you know, Cavaliero had a, a good a good contest. He, he scored 
a number of successful shots, but for me, he didn't look like he was controlling the ring that well. And um, I think he was maybe a little bit fortunate to come away with the victory there, but again, all judge dependent. And still a fantastic contest to watch, no matter the result. And now let's introduce the next contest. It is five three-minute rounds in the super heavyweight division. Now let me welcome first into the black corner from Croatia, Marko Milon. And now please welcome his opponent into the gold corner from Cuba, Fernando Arzola Lopez. Well, I've seen this man on a few occasions and I can tell the listeners now he's fantastic to watch despite the fact that he's 30 years old he's been a top class operator for many, many years Long reach lots of skills Great head movement. Always, always fantastic to watch. But his opponent tonight, Marco Malun, is no slouch either. Big punch in Croatia will be looking to cause a, a bit of an upset here because I would imagine that Lopez is probably the favourite here. rounds in the super heavyweight division your officials referee from Italy Luca Vadilonga your judges will be from Hungary the Czech Republic England Afghanistan and Argentina and now it's time to meet the boxers introducing to you first fighting out of the black corner weighing in at 106.4 kilograms his record 23 wins 13 defeats please welcome from Croatia Marco Milan. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the gold corner, weighing in at 99.2 kilograms. His record, four wins, seven defeats. He is an IBA World Championship silver medalist. Please welcome from Cuba, Fernando Arzola Lopez. Okay, guys, what you had, no punch in neck, no low blow, no holding, touch of gloves, and good luck. Un pass atrás. Box! Well, as you can see straight away, Milan, the southpaw, leading with his right hand in the black. Lopez, 
in the white and gold in the orthodox stance leading with his left hand another southpaw versus orthodox encounter we've seen a few tonight already Nice left jab off the curve by Lopez. <laughs> Alon with an ungainly sporadic attack there. Lopez timed that coming. One thing Milan is doing is he's maintaining a a high lead hand, which I believe, <laughs> I've always believed is effective against the Cubans. You can't have a low guard against the Cubans. They'll give you so much variety. Very, very sharp one, two there from Lopez. Looks like Lopez has a little bit of advantages in height and reach which most Cubans normally do. They're picked and selected perfectly for their physical attributes. And it's a system that definitely works, as everyone's quite aware. Milan trying to shut the space down a little bit. Not give Lopez so much room to get the counter punches off. Lopez switching to the body there with the right hand. As does Milan. A little bit out of distance there, a little bit out of reach. Lopez with a one two. Not too often you see the Cubans throw punches without realizing they're going to reach the target. Very usual. What you have seen the Cubans do is throw one or two punches that they know aren't going to meet the mark, but they know the third one's going to meet the mark. So another Cuban tactic that I've picked up over the years by watching so many of them so many times over. But I'd have to lean towards Lopez for that first round. Box. 
Neither fighter here has found a real foothold in this contest yet. No one is totally dominating. Cuban getting up. Stern talking to there for the referee for holding. Oh, nice right hook there from Milan on the break. Milan has to try and keep his shape and find his feet again a little bit, or he's going to fall into a, a bit of a trap here that could suit Lopez. Despite Lopez still missing some ungainly swings and not quite hitting the mark, but you do just get the feeling that the Cuban is a more physical and more controlling fighter and he's the guy that he might have a little cut over the right eye there. Stop. That's a very physical, difficult contest with neither fighter really finding their, their feet so far. With Cuban having slightly a little bit more success. Cuba no holding. Stop! Cuba no holding. No agarres. Box. The referee being quite hard on Lopez from Cuba. Break! Well, to punch, which he can. He's been smothered by Lopez's work a little bit here, so. Oh, left himself a little bit open there. Looking for the left uppercut. Well, that was quite a rough, tough round there. Both men, I think, feeling the pace of this contest a little bit already. And I think that that is really due to the fact that neither has really found the rhythm, their timing. And what tends to happen there is that it becomes a bit of a battle of attrition. And both men can't really get into the rhythm and box the way that they would like to box because kind of lost their way, getting caught in a lot of clinches, trying to find room to punch, takes a lot of physical energy. No, good start there. For the big fellow in black. Box. Stop! Hey, no punch is back. No punch is back. Box. Stop! Croatia. Hey, Croatia. Well, the referee has been busy in this contest, hasn't he? He's had a lot to do. <laughs> nice jab there from Milan and a good left cross as well having a little bit of success here in the third round Milan always a danger trying to keep it long with the Cubans though you have to have a real particular skill set to upset rhythm and timing. Because as any Olympic-style boxer will tell you, if they're up against a Cuban, 
and the Cuban finds the rhythm and the time and it becomes a very, very difficult night. No matter what you try, you're beaten in every area. Time, time. Doctor. Well, a little break in the action here for the Cubans' cut, which he sustained, I think, quite early in round one. Not entirely sure whether it was a, a punch or a head collision, but this has been quite a rough, ungainly bout, so I wouldn't be surprised it was a clash of heads. But the referee again has been harsh on, on the Cuban. Oh, there's a good right hook check from Milan. Very, very well timed. Good shot there. Seven. And although Lopez doesn't look particularly hot, still unsettling. I'm sure it was a bit of a flash knockdown. He's probably recovered quite quickly. And he looks quite steady on his feet, which is a really good sign. But can Milan capitalise on that? And it looks like he's, he's really forcing the action. Box. Well, that could have turned that round and possibly the contest around there. That certainly would have given the land. And the Croatian corner, a lot of confidence. Very, very rare that we see a Cuban on the seat of his pants. But that's what happened there, even though it was a coffin kind of right hook, not a flush punch. Lopez, maybe even a little bit off balance, not quite, never quite had his feet under him, so. But listen, it's a knockdown, it counts as a knockdown. No matter what way the judges see it, that could still be a 10 8 round. Yeah, well, it's turning into quite a messy affair now. Ends the reason I've went quiet. There's not really much to touch on. But Milan has certainly came back into this contest as it stands. I wouldn't go as far as saying Lopez has lost his weight. But he's definitely lost a little bit of rhythm. And a little bit of fluidity that he had earlier on in the contest. Milan maybe even growing in confidence a little bit. And possibly senses whether or not it's true or not, but possibly senses that the Cubans may be even slowing down a little bit. So that will certainly inspire him and 
drive him on a little bit to work a little bit harder to try and get that result here heads coming a little bit dangerously close there always a danger like I said earlier between orthodox and southpaw fighters <laughs> the referee being quite stringent again and quite forceful please listen to me of course the referee doesn't want either men to be cut and makes his night a lot more difficult as well Yeah, but Lopez looking a little bit unsettled here, a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, and another count. Another count against Lopez. This could dramatically change what's happening here. And again, that's going to really help Marco Millen in the Croatian corner. Getting a little bit of confidence here going into the, the last round. Small nick over there. The right eye, the Cuban. Doesn't look too serious a cut. Hey, when I say break, step back. Box. Hey. Well, just as I said earlier, just as I thought, Milan definitely growing in confidence, believing in himself a little bit more now. Nice body shot as well from Milan. Stop! Hey. Hey, Croatia. Watch your head. Box. Arzola Lopez looking slightly tired now and a little bit fatigued. Good shot there again from Millen. Box. Stop. Box. Hey, 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 Cuba. Both guys just showing signs of fatigue now, really. Here in round five, less than a minute to go. Nice left uppercut there from Milan. The Cuban certainly felt that shot. Looking to hold on. Get himself a bit of respite, a little bit of a breather. And Milan continues to force the action. He's really changed this around. Very, very impressive stuff. Just seems to be that little bit fitter than the Cuban, which is very unusual as well. Break! Break! 
Well, last ten. I'm quite sure that the Cuban will be quite happy about that. He looks particularly fatigued. Stop. A very entertaining contest from and, and fought at a very hectic pace for such big lads. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both boxers. We go to your judges' scorecards where we have a unanimous decision in favor of your winner. In the black corner, representing Croatia, Marco Milon. Yes, I really feel Milan deserved that contest. He forced the action, he really unsettled the Cuban, really took him out of stride, was far busier, and the Cuban looked super tired at the end of that contest, especially rounds four and five. That's a fantastic win from Marco Milan. This award presented by a good friend of mine, Chris Roberts. Former CEO of Box in Scotland, who's greatly missed over here.
Ladies and gentlemen, before I announce the next contest, let me please remind you of our great sponsors, Ben Boom Company, Gold Caravan, and My Group. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our next contest. It is six three-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Please welcome first to the ring in the black corner from France, Pierre Rossadini. Coming into the gold corner from Belgium, Ibrahima Diallo. Well, this promises to be a really exciting contest in the middleweight division. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Diallo from Belgium and Rossadini from France. Gentlemen, this contest is six three-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Your officials, referee Jean-Robert Lane, judges Stefan Nicolo, Augustine Kambala, and Michael Megsweeta. And now, to meet the boxers, introducing to you first, fighting out of the black corner, weighing in at 72.6 kilograms, his record, four wins, five defeats, one draw. He comes to us from VAR in France. Please welcome Pierre Rossadini. And his opponent across the ring in the gold corner weighed in at 71.15 kilograms. His record unbeaten as a professional seven wins no losses he comes to us from miami by way of bruxelles capital belgium please welcome ibrahima Listen to my command at all time and protect yourself at all time. Check in. Delegate. 
Bucks. Well, again, as we've seen so many times tonight, we have another orthodox versus the southpaw. Diallo in the red and white, the southpaw fighter, leading with his right hand. And Pierre Rossadini from France, the orthodox boxer in the white gloves, leading with his left hand. Pretty common occurrence in the Olympic style of boxing. You see a lot of this. Nice lead left hand to the body there from Diallo. Lovely check hook as well from the off here. Seems really sharp. Timing his pair of punches well, doubling up with the right uppercut and the right hook. Lovely bit of variety there from the man in white and red. Tagged by a counter punch as well. hand from Ross you would like to think he had his home supporter here being the Monaco as you can hear with the roar of the crowd when he had a little bit of success there the fans reacted quite loudly a sharp jab from Diallo Ten. Nice combination, mixing mix between body and head. Very well, Rossidini. Good finish there. Lively first round there. Both guys have been success. Very hard to score, actually. See some of the success there from both men in the first round. Having a smile at each other and a little bit of showing mutual respect. Always great to see an Olympic style boxing.
Rostadini just falling a little bit short with the counter punch with the right hand there. Shot right hand and success with that. Nice right hand to the body as well. Better start here from Rossi Dini. Well, almost a minute gone, he's gained a little bit of foothold. If he can maintain this for the resuming one one and a half minutes to go, he'll definitely have a much better round than he did in the first round, which was very, very even. But I did slightly lean towards Diallo. This body shot there. From the man in white and blue. He seems to have found a, a nice rhythm for himself here and he's getting his combinations off pretty well. Nice left hand to the body there. From Diallo. Yep, nice, and got loads of leverage on that back hit into the body. Always pays dividends in the later parts of the contest. You land those good body shots early. It's almost like putting money in the bank. When you really need it, you can take it out later on. When your opponent will certainly start to feel those and become a little bit more fatigued. Ali really does have a lovely right jab though. It's very, very accurate. Likes to step in with that jab as well. Gets good leverage on it. Probably just not using it enough with enough variety right now. There's a number of different ways to throw jabs. And you're up against other world-class opposition. You need to use those varieties of that jab to keep them guessing, to set up your, your combination punches to put yourself in good positions to the good quick counter punch. This is a really, really exciting bout, just as I thought it would be. These guys want to win a lot. It's another very, very close round. Hard round to call. Certainly went towards the yellow in the first round. Rossidini had a far better second round there. Lovely right hook counter off the ropes from Dalio there, as you've seen, but he took a great right hand from Rossidini that I mentioned earlier. Very, very evenly matched contest. Yeah. 
Totally on that left hand there. I really do feel at this point of the contest that he really does have to try and get Rossellini's respect a little bit more. Otherwise, you do get the feeling that Rossellini will continue to force the action. Rather, we can't really get enough respect to keep Rossellini off. Very, very good and very fit. Ahora tiene que trabajar esto tuyo mucho, ¿ok? Necesito que sigas trabajando tu jab, que te muevas de pierna. Y es que te muevas de ¿Ok? ¿Ok? ¿Se cansa otro? Yep, Dalio just trying to stay to the right a little bit more now, hoping that that will offset Rossadini's attacks. There's always a little bit of a battle of position in the southpaws and orthodox fighters. The southpaw would preferably like to keep his right foot outside the orthodox boxer's left foot. Draw lead, get the counters off and get out of the way. In an ideal world, and the orthodox fighter would almost like to do the same. Keep his left foot outside the, right paw, the side paw's right foot and get off his shots. So, what was a real battle, a real interesting battle of styles. If you're a boxing aficionado, it's always great to watch a southpaw, a top southpaw boxer, top orthodox boxer. Lovely check hook there from Dalio. He seems to have found a little bit better of a rhythm for himself in this round. He's, he's coming up punches and his, his jabs have been quite successful, but Rossettini likes to pursue the action and put the pressure on and a little bit more active. But if you know what you're looking for, you can't always mistake motion for action. Sometimes a fighter can look very busy, but he's not actually doing that much effectively. And a good judge and a good coach will recognise that. All part of the intricacies of the sweet science, really. Oh, 
This is very, very evenly matched contest here. Both men really want to win this contest. Being a Scotsman, I always compare the rivalry between Scotland and England, but from what I'm told, Belgium and France seem to have a little bit of a rivalry as well. I think it's slightly more friendly than Scotland versus England, but um, still bragging rights. It's a good right hand there from Rossadini. Nice comeback there from Diallo. Such an evenly matched contest. These guys seem to have a lot of mutual respect for each other as well, which is really great to see in the sport of Olympic boxing. Well, here we are now in the last round of a contest that sits on the ballot and truly Again, like I said earlier, depending on what you like to watch, and judges are different human beings, they're different people that look for different technical abilities in each fighter. Some some judges like aggressive fighters who throw lots of shots, some some judges like technical boxers who are really good counter punchers. So it's very very mixed when it comes to scoring a contest. And that is why so many times in box, and even like tonight, we've seen some contests where you would think that one opponent has perhaps just nicked to victory. All in very close matches. The matches tonight have been unbelievably evenly matched. Really, really close contest to call. And um, I myself after 35 years in the sport and nothing else is a bit of an expert, and I've, I've had a couple of wrong calls tonight. Um, but again, a contest that really could have went either way. So, it depends totally on what the judges like to see. And of course, it's different. But every contest so far has been intriguing and excellent to watch. We've seen some great skills on show. We've seen some great punching on show as well. Um, particularly from Guruli from Georgia who landed a fantastic right hand over Harshev from Moldova we've seen Gerardus Krause's good body shots possibly doing enough to win the, the contest over the brilliant Alan Lopez and again Cavallaro against Rias from Kazakhstan who I thought Rias had maybe just hit the contest maybe just a little bit more work a little bit more aggressive Cavalier picked up the field. so this is boxing this is the nature of the sport and this is what makes it one of the most exciting sports in the world and why everyone loves boxing so much and IBA are doing a fantastic job in putting these contests on and the way that they're changing the sport blessing the fighters with financial rewards just fantastic what Umar Kremlev and Chris Roberts and Gabriel Martelli, the work that they're doing is just absolutely brilliant and you know you really have to admire it and you know it's, it's catching fire across the world. I definitely have more people talk to me about Olympic style boxing than the professional boxing these days which is a brilliant sign.
but well done to all the guys involved. Again here we're seeing another really closely contested bout. A little flashes of class from, from both boxers. Yeah, well, you would have to say the more calculated counter puncher, a little bit more thoughtful. Looking some tasty shots where we're seeing Rossi Dini force the action. Put some nice combinations together, not afraid to leave himself in a vulnerable position just to get off a good attack. So, fantastic stuff all around tonight thus far. And he's still pressing the action. He was a little bit lost for words at the end of that. Both guys just, I was just quite captivated in the contest and found myself not speaking very much. But yeah, very, very good about that. Very, very good to watch. Both top quality performers. Hello? Sorry for going a little bit quiet on the listeners, but. I was kind of fixated on that contest there. Even us guys that have to relate to the, the listeners, what's actually happening can sometimes get caught up 
in the excitement of the fight and just go, just go a little bit quiet. So apologies there. But what a what a really evenly matched contest to watch. Both guys having success. Both guys showing great variety. And a, a heck of a lot of heart as well. Fantastic to see that kind of mutual respect at the end. Something that's prevalent in boxing. So many boxers know what each other go through. They know what they have to sacrifice to be successful fighters. They all understand that. And when the contest ends, normally they become very good friends and show lots of mutual respect for each other and actually stay friends for a long time after. Very, very unique, fantastic sport in that sense. Well, I've not been overly accurate with my fight outcomes tonight, which I must say is very rare for me. I'm normally very good at that. <laughs> but it's been that some of these contests have been so close and so well you know, so so well matched that it's so difficult to, to follow up on some here of these for both contests, which is a great a thing. Fight. We go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Niccolo scores about 57 points to 57 points a draw. Judge Kambala scores about 58 points to 56 points. Diallo. Wow. And our final judge, Masavik, scores about 56 points to 58 points for Pierre Rossatini. For Rossatini. We have a draw. I know, a draw. Well, looking at my score sheet here, I have it right for the first time tonight. I'm very happy about that. Um, and I think it was a very fair result. Both guys showed tremendous ability in their own talents. And it was a very, very good matchup as they've all been tonight. And I'm certain that this is a contest that people would like to see again. Just to see who on the better night has the upper hand. But you cannot argue with that draw. I can't argue with that being a draw because I have it even here as well. So Diallo maybe looks a little bit more upset than Rossadini did, but I think it was a very, very fair result. Fantastic contest from both guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now ready for our next contest. Before we introduce that, please let me remind you Bet Boom Company, Gold Caravan, and my group. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our next contest. It is 10 three-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Please welcome to the ring first into the black corner from the Dominican Republic, Hilbert Lenin Castillo Rivera. into the gold corner from Venezuela, Albert Ramirez Duran.
this contest is 10 three minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Your officials, referee Jean-Robert Lane, judges Stefan Nicolo, Michael McSuita, and Andre Valiasso. And now it is time to meet the boxers. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the black corner, weighing in at 78.8 kilograms. His record, an excellent one. 24 wins, only four defeats, one draw. 19 of his wins come by way of knockout. He is the former Latin light heavyweight champion and a 2008 Olympian from Beijing. Please welcome from Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic, Gilbert Lenin Castillo Rivera. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the gold corner, weighing in at 78.1 kilograms. His record, also an outstanding one. 16 wins, no defeats. 15 of his 16 wins come by way of knockout. Please welcome from El Viga, Venezuela, the big hitting, Albert Ramirez. Gentlemen, you receive my instruction in the dressing room. Listen to my command at all time and protect yourself at all time. Check hands. Good luck. Stefan? Please. I am the referee, okay? Don't start, please. Please, be careful. Not on the back. Time in, box! Break! Step back, step back. Your feet, watch your feet. Nice shot to the body there from Ramirez. Dropped that left hand in nice and quick. Bend that left hook round the guard. Castillo, Castillo just managing to get that right hand up in time. He's not took any of those looping left hands flush. Castillo quite poised and doesn't look in a rush at this particular point in time. Ramirez Duran has set his stall a little bit earlier, looking for that looping heavy left hand, trying to make a dent in Castillo. That one possibly got through, a little bit of a stumble there though. Feet maybe got tangled up again, as we've seen so many night, uh, so many times tonight, guys. 
Orthodox versus Southpaw. Lead left hand versus lead right hand. So many times tonight. And it can cause all kind of complications depending on the fighters' Time. tactics and their styles. You would maybe have to Lean towards Ramirez Duran in that first round, just in terms of sheer activity, it just seemed to be a little bit busier. Lennon Castillo chose to have a look. He's quite good in getting that right hand up nice and quick when Ramirez Duran tried to sneak that little bit left hand round the side of Castillo's ear. This is what matches. I would imagine it's another. Um, Dragon rights contest. Venezuela and Dominican Republic. Again, not quite on the level of Scotland versus England, but I'm quite sure. There's bragging rights between these countries, so both men will want to put on great performances and win. I'm quite sure. Ramirez Durant changing levels there, just taking a dip at the knees, seeing if he can get a reaction from Castillo. Tries that loop and left. He likes that loop and left over the top, off the jab. Maybe they've watched. You too. Casillo in preparation on video and I think he's maybe vulnerable to that shot because he has tried it on a few occasions now. Castillo got nice high hands though. Quite calm. Seems to still be having a look at Ramirez Durant. Put on that jab out, see if he can measure something to maybe get Duran's respect. This double jab cross there. Duran skips back into range. Trying to maintain that front foot pressure. Oh, a nice combination there. The right hook followed by the right uppercut with the same hand. Not an easy, not an easy combination to pull off. Especially as early as round two. When both players are still fresh, legs are sharp, brains are sharp, fatigue's not quite kicked in yet. Nice sharp right hand through the middle there. Castillo. Smartly drifting to his own left there. It goes back into the punching distance. Possibly Scotland's greatest ever boxing trainer, the great Peter Harrison, father of world champion Scott Harrison, used to say that when you were up against a southpaw, if you wanted a fight, you would go into the southpaw's left hand, you would move to your own right. If you wanted to outbox them, you would move to your left. Boxing can sometimes be very, very simple, but made complicated. He's still being a little bit sharper to the jab here. 10 second clap up. This round could be one on who's a little bit busier at the end here. But another difficult round to score. Like so many of the contests tonight, some of the rounds have been so difficult to score. And here again, harping back to what the judges actually like. And of course, like everyone, people are different. They like to see different things they like. 
It's what you like, but the bottom line of the matter is punches scored, ring general shit, good defense. All these things need to be looked at while well, judging a contest. But there was that tricky combination I pointed out earlier. The right up and got followed by the right hook. Okay, el árbitro lo vea, porque si no te va a seguir haciendo el okay? Second out. Bye, Ramirez. Sucked and out. The better variety of punches came from Ramirez. A little bit more adventurous. At this point in time for me, Castillo a little bit steadier, a little bit more cautious. Nice left hand to the body there from Ramirez Duran. With a last name like Duran, you certainly want to be performing in the ring, don't you? <laughs> Legendary Panamanian multi weight world champion who really could do it all. One of the greatest boxers in the history of the sport. He's falling a little bit short there with that long left hand to the body. Castillo here trying to really time Duran, but he's not doing a very good job of it. I think slight advantages in height and reach. But still finding it quite difficult to time Duran on the way in to counter punch him. Duran seems to be a little bit sharper to the punch and a little bit more a little bit more active, a little bit more busy which again can sometimes catch the eyes of the judges. Again, if you're uh, mistaken motion for action, you can sometimes lead to the more active boxer, even though he's not scoring the cleaner shots or setting up the better traps. Or But we are in round three now, and Lennon Castillo really hasn't committed that much to, to his attacks. Seems to be waiting just a little bit too much. I think that that would definitely sway the judges towards Ramirez Duran. Good fight in there. From Duran. Something that we've seen, we've seen all night tonight is lots of mutual respect from the boxers, which I think is fantastic to see. Well, he can be from Scotland. Very sorry, I can translate to the English listeners. Uh, what the clones are saying. Slight glass in there. I think Castillo's corner there. I would be quite sure that they actually just take him in a couple of days. Just to let his punches go a little bit more and be a little bit more active. Because we are in round four now, 
And Ramirez Duran has certainly been the more active boxer. His punch variety also has been a little bit more eye catching. Watch your step. Watch your step. But someone in the crowd is saying that Castillo is trying to step, or Duran is trying to step on Castillo's feet. That's an old tactic used mainly when you're up against a tricky mover, just to get him to stop in his tracks a little bit. But I really can't see the use for that technically from the contest that I'm watching right now. Castillo doesn't change tactics or do something a little bit different now. People that remain Oh, good shot from Ramirez in there. Clipping right around the ear. Castillo really felt that. He may not be the count, you know, yet he has. He looks fairly coherent. Not overly shaken. His balance seems good. His eyes seem sharp. Still punching back, punching back well as well. Jan has to be careful. Sometimes you score a knockdown and you bull rush your opponent and you run into a big shot because your opponent's not as concussed or hurt as what you actually think he is. So you also have to be cautious with experience in these situations as well. But certainly a good shot from Jan. Enough to secure it for me this victory for him, even though it is only round four. Castillo not looking particularly hot anymore, but definitely looks a little bit uncomfortable. Lordy, Lordy, step back, break, 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 break. Okay, step back. back. Well, final round in this intriguing contest.
la cadera, ojo con la derecha, es que te la saque para adelante. Seguro, seguro, seguro todos tus movimientos. Con paciencia. Esa. Con paciencia. Papá. Viva la cadera. Viva la media. Esa. No tires el trabajo, sigue trabajando así. Eso. Eh, bonito, bonito. Pon tu estilo, niño, vamos. Mira tu mano adelante. Moléstalo un poquito con la mano adelante, boba esa. Sí. Sí. Inteligente, inteligente, inteligente. Precisión, inteligencia, Albe. La defensa perfecta, que no te toque, que no te toque. Él no, él no está para no pa ti hoy. Papá, ve al lado. Cuando ya la llega a entrar, esa. Fíntalo, fíntalo. Claro, antes de entrar, míralo. Claro. Esa es. Eso, eso le pesa. Eso le pesa. Yo con la derecha, él. Eh. Eh, calentando, no. Trabajito bueno, venga. Ten cuidado con su crochet de derecha, que es la mano que te quiere coger fuerte él. Stop. Stop. Eh. Ya, bien. ¿Yo qué? Camina a tu derecha, Alba, a tu derecha. Claro. La dulce, hijo, ladito, por el lado. Camina a tu derecha, Alba. No te vayas a la mano de él, buena esa, que te está esperando con esa. Quítatela, quítatela. Inteligente, inteligente. ¡Tay! Hola, hola. Papi, con el ya nada más lo manejaste, ¿viste? Sigue tocándolo sí, sí, con sí, el ya. Sí. Sigue, sigue, sigue tocándolo con el ya, ¿ok? Sigue molestándolo con ese ya. Dame tres, respira profundo. ¿Quieres? Venía. Porque le esté picando para atrás. Listo. Hey, no, más inteligente la pegada, mano. Listo. Más inteligente la pegada, ¿ok? Cuando estés entrando, el abuso por lado y lado. Listo. El abuso por lado y lado. Está sobreviviendo los rounds contigo hoy. Míralo, fíjate, míralo. Está sobreviviendo los rounds porque no está, él no está en la pelea. Tienes que entrar un poquito más en la pelea porque él no está en la pelea contigo hoy. Está sobreviviendo. Ok, dale, dale, dale. Ok, vení. Sigue con ese jam, mantente el alma. Se cansa, se cansa. Sí, yo con él. Yo con él. Yo con él. Watch your step. Okay. 
Watch your step. Can't see. Stop, stop, stop. Time. Oh. Okay. Box. left hand there sorry again to the listeners a few technical issues there but all resolved now back to the action Listen to me. This is what he's telling you. Tiene que sacar la pina afuera y sacar y soltar la la jodia derecha. Él está brincando y todo y se está cayendo el mismo, okay? Respira profundo, toma. Respira profundo y suéltalo para atrás. Suave, suave. Three times. Eso. Second out. It's okay. Start from Jerome with that you left are, cross to the body. Box. Don't think that was particularly low. Castillo really has to up the tempo now. Try and get a foothold on this. Fight! Step back. One step back. Una pelea limpia. The corn is getting tired, he's getting tired. Let's go. <laughs> Not so sure about that. Right. They're letting go with some really good shots. <laughs> yeah, 
a shot from Castillo there, right hand off the jab. Stop! You hold. Stop. Box! Shot right hook to the body there. Nice combination from Geran Ramirez there. Stop! Stop! Box! Well, that was a bit of finish from Castillo. Trying to finish it, but it a little bit more active than it did the last round. Breathe. Work profundo, por favor, y suéltalo suave. Remain out three times. Slow, 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 slow. Listen. Give me the, 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 the thing behind the head, puppy. The coach, cool him down. I got it. Benny, he's tired. Motherfucker, kick his ass. No es que ya grande, ¿no? Tú primero. Hey, tú primero. No puedes dejar que se te agrande él. Listo. Ojo con eso. Ojo con eso que se te está agrandando. No podemos permitir eso. Listo. Buen aire, buen movimiento. Acuérdate, la ajuste de tres golpes. ¿Ok? Mira que ahorita lo cogiste con esa, con esa mano por encima. Lo cogiste bien. Listo. Sigue trabajando ahí con eso. Listo. Vamos, hombre. Vamos. Papi. Yo 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 Okay. He's still making the, the mistake he's going into Gerard Ramirez's left hand. In my opinion, he should be trying to drift left a little bit. Take his power hand away. He's starting to have a little bit more success now. Yeah. Head up. Box. I don't know if Ramirez is maybe just ever so slightly running out of gas. Or ideas. I do, I, I do agree with um, Castillo's people. You ask him to press the action and do some basic stuff like double jab right hand as he as he motions his way forward. He does have an effective jab as well. He does look like he's pressing the action now a little bit more. Uh, nice counter punch there from Ramirez Duran. It's Castillo advanced with the right hand. Duran had that back hand popped and ready. Castillo's corner giving him great advice, advising him not to follow him, not to. Just keep following him, ring around the rosy, but to cut across the ring. And keep telling him he's getting tired, and I think that that'll be giving Castillo a little bit of confidence now. If this was a three round bout from earlier. 
there will probably only be one winner in Duran, but it's totally different when it's a 10 round contest. You can start slow and lose the first few rounds, but come on strong at the end. And even though I can't understand exactly what his corner is saying, you can tell that the confidence is definitely a lot better than what it was earlier. Okay, to be exuberant in that corner now. They even sound more positive, even though I don't know what they're saying. So it's like the steel success there with that left hand, followed up by the right hand. But should we be looking to maintain that pressure over the next two rounds? Stop. Time, time, please. Please. Too much Vaseline. Too much. Eh? Too much Vaseline. One, one more, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Time in. Box. Hit it. First minute here from Duran. It's the stumble there. I think the feet got tangled up. Hey, hey, please. Okay. Don't, no, don't turn. You turn. Well, I didn't Time think in. he had much choice to turn. I think the feet were tangled quite badly. Stop, stop. Okay. Okay. Box. Not on the back. Stop, 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 stop. Hey, 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 hey. You, stop. Stop, stop, stop. You, you hold, okay? Box! Stop, stop. Stop, holding. Stop! Stop holding. Box! Nice job. Fantastic job there. From Castillo. Really gaining ground now on Ramirez. And making him seem quite uncomfortable, actually. Another good round from Castillo.
Toma la tuya. Ey, ahora es que, papi. Vamos, ya, vale, sube la pena. Vamos, vamos. Tú mira, Facebook, le miquita, le miquita. ¡Ah! Suave, Facebook. La TV. El hueso. El hueso, eh. Ey, ey, ey. Agárralo. Eso, ojo, con esa mano. Agarras ahí dentro. Le jodes el plan. Él está buscando pelea y tú no se la vas a dar. Y volteamos round, listo. Vamos a cerrar bien el combate, listo. Él busca, pelea, él, él busca pelea y tú no se la vas a dar. Tú vas a dar boxeo. Oh. Ok, ahora es que es, puñeta. Yo voy a ti, cabrón, dale. Vamos. Trabajamos duro. Vení. Vení. Hay que, hay, hay que noquear este cabrón. Hay que noquear este cabrón. Vamos, vamos. Limpio, claro, okay. no falta, ¿ok? okay. Muy bien. Timing. Box. Well, final round here. It's been an intriguing bout. Ebb and flow at times, but for me, Castillo coming on strong over the last four or five rounds. Don't turn, don't turn. Geran Ramirez certainly made a better start in the earlier part of the contest, but for me, Castillo has been the most dominant force, force in the action. Actually looking to make a fight, you know, he's really looking to make a, a tough contest of this and Ramirez looking slightly uncomfortable. Both boxers having a word with each other, something that's not uncommon as well. Quite sure they can understand each other. Stop, stop, stop. Hey. Stop. Box. Stop. 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 Box. Fantastic. Brilliant. Again, apologies for maybe even going slightly quiet, but captured in the beauty of this contest is very, very, very well fought over 10 rounds. Great pace, loads of punch variety. Great tactics from Castillo in the end. I think he realised that he had to put the pressure on Duran, but he wasn't going to get anywhere. He was just going to get counter punched and outboxed. So decided to steadily put the pressure on him. And for me, 
La I really feel that Castillo may be just nicked this one, but again, you never know. It was on the front foot throughout. Really tried to make a contest of it. But Jaram played his part as well. Very, very good to watch. And another contest that you wouldn't mind seeing again, like most tonight. Unbelievably well matched bouts tonight. I love your family. Ahí va mi madre en el vigía la conquista. Venezuela, La Guaira, Caracas. Saludos y bendiciones para todos. We won. Ganamos esta pelea, ganamos esta pelea. Let's go, we won. Judge Nicolo scores the bout 97 points to 92 points. Judge Massiva scores the bout 96 points to 93 points. And Judge Bellasson scores the bout 95 points to 94 points. All three in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. In the gold corner from Venezuela, Albert Ramirez oh. Dura. Well, again, I'm a little bit surprised at the verdict. You know, I thought Castillo pursued throughout. I think he was a more aggressive fighter. I think he threw more punches, you know. You know, but again, this is boxing, you know. It's uh, very, very surprising that some of these results can go the way that they do. But I prefer Castillo's work ethic. I prefer his aggression. I preferred his punch variety in the later part of the fight. Uh, in the earlier part of the fight, Duran was looked very, very good, but I just think Castillo came strong at the end and um, possibly maybe won by a round or two. But again, unbelievably um, well-matched contests. Um, IBA are really uh, blown out of the water tonight. What a fantastic uh, show in terms of how evenly matched um, these boxers are. Uh, it's really, really fantastic. Brilliant stuff to watch. Um, even though I had Castillo just, just slightly pipping the fight. Um, another one that's really difficult to argue based on opinions. So, some fantastic stuff again.
Tu le mets dessus dedans, tu le laisses Le bon vieux temps. Moi, ce soir, on des points c'est travers à chaque fois. On faisait les cantons, les trucs pour le début, avant le national, on regardait les trucs de travers. Well, next up we're going to see one of the most outstanding Olympic style boxers over the over the past few years, the fantastic Sufian Umaha from France up against Nicolas Blanco from Argentina, who I can say I've never actually seen box before, but my friends down in Argentina tell me that he's very, very tough, very determined and very strong, so I would expect it to be another intriguing bout. This one over 12 three minute rounds. Something that I've done many times over, and I can tell you it's a very difficult experience. I think this is Umaha's first ever 12 round contest. And you certainly can learn a lot about a, a boxer over 12 rounds and you can over three for Omaha, I think a three-time world champion, Olympic silver medalist, outstanding boxer, technically brilliant, unbelievable hand and foot speed, fantastic boxing brain, unbelievable judgment of distance, very, very intelligent fighter inside the ring.
Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, we are ready for our next contest. It will be contested for the vacant WBA Continental title. And now it will be 10 three-minute rounds in the lightweight division. So please welcome to the ring first in the black corner from Argentina, Nicolas Ariel Blanco. And now please welcome his opponent coming into the gold corner representing France, Sofiane Omiha. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is 10 three-minute rounds in the lightweight division and will be contested for the vacant WBA Continental title. Your officials for this bout, referee Giuseppe Guattatore, your judges jean Robert Lane, Audrey Baliasso and Mikel Maxuita, your supervisor Carlos Chavez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to meet the boxers. Let me introduce to you first, fighting out of the black corner, weighing in 62.5 kilograms, his record unbeaten as a professional with nine wins, no losses. Please welcome from Santa Fe, Argentina, Nicolas Ariel across the ring fighting out of the gold corner weighed in at 51.2 kilograms his professional record unbeaten three wins no losses two of his wins coming by way of knockout he is a former European gold medalist former three-time world gold medalist former Olympic silver medalist representing France. Please welcome Sofia Omiya. Remember the instruction in the virtual room. They want a clean fight. Pelea Libia, okay? Bonjour. Buenas tardes. 
thousands and millions of Azerbaijan uh, Russians, Dutch, Russians. I don't give a shit, I'm just Well, we have a real world-class operator here in the fantastic Frenchman that I'm sure many of you have seen many times over. Sophia Umaha, fantastic boxer. I've always enjoyed watching this guy, no matter what competition he's in. He's always great to watch. Can do a little bit of everything, or a lot of everything. Unbelievable reflexes, great timing, fantastic judgment of distance, great head movement. His punch picking is sublime. But from what I'm led to believe, in the contacts that I have, I'm told tonight that Blanco is very, very tough. And what else would you expect from the Argentinian boxers? They're always very, very tough. Very hard to break. Very hard punchers. I was unfortunate enough to face a few Argentinian boxers in my very long career, amateur and professional, and they always gave me a very, very difficult night. So. I don't think this is going to be a one-sided contest by any means. But when you're up against the, the quality and the caliber of Omaha, you can always expect to see something special. Establishing that jab early. Making sure that his defence and balance is on point so he can punch back. Very, very quick handed as well. But again, to reiterate my statement from earlier, if you're up against an Argentinian boxer, they're normally unbelievably durable. They have great stamina. And they do not understand the word quit. They will keep going and going and going until they have to be saved. Of course, we've seen some great champions come from Argentina as well over the years. Lo 
using that sharp jab to the body mainly as a range finger. Just the way we would like to, just a little bit off target with some of those shots. Argentinian unusually covering quite a lot of ground here. Right. Normally quite aggressive. Boxers normally like to stand right in front of you as well. But I think he knows the sharpness of Umaha and the technical ability and the talent that this man possesses. A little early walk back to his corner, the old pro trick. A lot of great old professional boxers would actually understand when the room was about to end. And rather than go from one end of the ring to the other, they would slowly move their way back to the corner. So when the bell went, they would just sit down. Very, very, very clever tactics. But something that you have to. Switching southpaw might not be the smartest tactic from Blanco. I've seen Umaha up against a number of southpaws and he always finds it really quite easy to box against southpaws, so it might not be the best tactic. But up to now, Blanco's doing well, he's holding his own. He's, he's not been in any great danger so far. Omaha, not of yet, has put his foot on the gas and put some of those flashy, blazing combinations together that we know he can throw. Sometimes with 
with great ease it's almost effortless switch to the body very well there gave Blanco a couple of light taps to the head before sitting down on his body shot dropped his hip tried to get a nice bit of weight on that left hook to the body To the body. I would actually like to see him higher go to the body a little bit more. It is a 12 round contest. Body punching can play a massive, massive part in a 12 round contest. Like I said earlier, it's almost like putting money in the bank if you need to take it out later on. And if you have that technical ability to be able to switch to the body, it's a very, very effective tool in a 12 round contest. Sharp, accurate work there. Speed from Hamid. Six, seven, eight. Really showing his class. Senses that. Oh, he goes to the body with a great left hook. This could only be a matter of time now. 
If Blanco doesn't recover so well. Holding. 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 Michael, so a bit of fire there, trying to get a hot shot of his own. I really feel he's on the hook here. From another good hand from him. Michael's going to do really well to survive here, in my opinion. Fuma had the chance to put his foot on the gas, and he is. There's some heavy shots. Why he stopped punching there, I don't know. Yes, he still has to let him know. Professional boxing. Although, it's the same as from Olympics to the boxing. But what a fantastic round of from the brilliant Frenchman. Nice right hand again from Umaha. Full credit to Blanco for taking some of these shots. Some of these shots are very heavy. He shipped them well. Like I said earlier about Argentinian boxers, unbelievably tough. Normally have greatest time. That's a fantastic left foot to the body. Tricked him with the left foot to the head first, which was lighter. And then switch with the left foot to the body. Sofiane, no push, no push. Sofiane, oh, what a shot! Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, twenty-thirteen, twenty-fourteen, twenty-fifteen, twenty-sixteen, twenty-seventeen, twenty-eighteen, twenty-nineteen, twenty-twenty, twenty-twenty-one, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-five, twenty-twenty-six, twenty-twenty-seven, twenty-twenty-eight, twenty-twenty-nine, twenty-twenty-ten, twenty-twenty-eleven, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-5, twenty Umaha really showing his class now. Punch variety, exceptional. You can see why this guy is a three time world champion. Just looking for range now. In the right opportunity. 
moving his body in different positions to try and land those heavy shots. Heavy right hook round the ear. Lovely counter punch with the right up there. He's in full control now. You do get the feeling that Fumaha put his feet on the gas here that this could be over. And the flash. Good body shot. Maybe he's going to have to take a little bit of a look. That hit much punishment. Wanko can actually shut. I believe the referee is Italian and he's actually <laughs> he's actually refereed um, one of my European professional title fights. So if I put the referee for still being able to move around the ring so well after all these years. Oh, fantastic right hand to the body. And you've seen the expression on Bonico's face. He really felt that shot. Fantastic punch. Massive blue shot. Boxing as well. A long straight right hand to the body. If he hit that soft rib, it's always going to hurt. It's always going to take lots of your opponent. Fantastic punch for IA. Looking for those body shots and he is finding them, but he still has to try to open Blanco up and create more opportunities to land those body shots. What a good body puncher will do is preoccupy his opposition's mind with other punches before switching to the body real quick, and that's how you get real success. Any boxer is normally a very, very tough abdominal region. And if they can see the shot coming, they can often stop the shot. But if you don't see the shot, you can't brace yourself. The central nervous system doesn't tighten up, your muscles don't tighten up. And anyone can really go down from a hard body shot. Something that you just learn over the years, the experience. Good sparring. Michael comes back with a good left hook there. Nice body shot again from Umaha. Left his left hand out in front of Blanco's eyes a little bit there and dropped it straight right to the body.
Oh. Three. Oh. And the North Bronco just took far too many heavy bomb shots. You can see why he wasn't too keen to get back up. Pico. Bravo, 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 mucho bravo. Tu viens le valoir le l'Argentin là, chercher ça. Casse la boxe c'est tout. Non mais après c'est parce qu'il baisse la tête. Tu sais que ce disais ne cherche pas à faire mal. Si tu cherches à faire mal, il le voit. Et d'ailleurs les gars ils rentrent la tête, tu vois. Prends ma veste, ma veste, ma veste copine. Il est où Allez récupérer. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both boxers. Quattarone accepts the retirement of Blanco's corner. Official time, 2 minutes and 59 seconds of round number 6. Therefore, your winner by 6th round, TKO and the new WBA Continental Champion from France, Sofia.
Ladies and gentlemen, before I announce our next contest, may I please remind you of our fantastic sponsors, Bet Boom Company, Gold Caravan, and My Group. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for our next contest. It is five three-minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Please welcome to the ring first, going into the black corner from Azerbaijan, Malik Hasanov. Well, Malik Hasanov here looking ready to start. Looks focused on drum block. But this again, like every other contest, it will be unbelievably evenly matched. And now please welcome his opponent coming into the gold corner representing Russia, Pavel Fedorov. Pavel Fedorov enters the ring looking sharp and focused. All in white and gold. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is five three minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Your officials for the bout, a referee from Italy, Luca Vadilonga. Your judges of ringside from the Czech Republic, England, Argentina, Hungary, and Afghanistan. And now it is time to meet the boxers. Let me introduce to you first. Fighting out of the black corner, weighing in at 63.35 kilograms. His record, 20 wins, 17 defeats. He comes to us from Azerbaijan. Please welcome Malik Hasanov. And now please welcome his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the gold corner, weighing in at 66.75 kilograms, with an outstanding record, 42 wins against 19 defeats. He fights out of and represents Russia. Please welcome Pavel Fedorov. Okay, guys, watch your head, no punching back, no low blow, no holding, touch your gloves, and good luck. Well, this promises to be a really, really exciting bout. Fedorov and Hasanov. Box. Two top class operators inside this ring. Good start from Fedorov, something I always like to see get that jab working straight away. Hasanov, no mean operator as well. Top class operator. Lovely right hand to the body from Fedorov there. Let's 
Instructions from the referee there. Of breaking box. Holding, holding. Holding. Break! Break! Nice shot, ha right hand on the break there from Fedorov. Russia, Russia no holding. Russia no holding. Stop! Сидите, видите, вы говорите, время, что делать туда. Почаще, не, почаще вы. Feather off. <laughs> Hasanov being countered, but it's finding a nice little flow. He's got a little bounce in his step. Looks very confident, just not quite found his range yet. Fedorov able to sneak in the odd counter punch, the old lead right hand to the body. Very good jab as well from Fedorov. Good success with the jab, considering he's up against the southpaw. Depending on the angles you use, it's always quite difficult to out jab a southpaw. 
Nice punch picking from Federov there. Break. Wilds actually moving Stop. on his feet. Break. Step back. Punching and moving Stop. against the southpaws. No easy task. Rassia, Rassia, holding. Again. Step back. Step back, guys. Step back. Russia is holding. Hey, watch your No holding. Azerbaijan holding. Azerbaijan holding. No holding, Rassia. Rassia holding. Rassia. Stop! Hey. Hey. Look at me. Oi. Fedorov certainly has a little bit of work to do on his inside work. He's not too confident when he's up close. Tends just to hold. His preferred ranges are definitely middle and long range. If he throws a final shot up close, he likes to move off after he throws that shot. He doesn't like to stand there and trade off. Минуты и половину говорите четче. Rasia, Azerbaijan, step back, step back, guys. Back, 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 back. Break! Oh, Still, Fedorov doesn't really want to work inside. Prefers to hold and, and hustle till he gets back out in a long range where he prefers his long range work. Nice combination for Fedorov there, Holding. letting the hands flow. Both guys need to learn how to work up close a little bit better. I'm sure they'll pick up a lot from this contest and realise they have to go back to the gym to learn how to fight inside properly. It's a very, very, very important part of boxing. Fighting at all ranges, Stop. long, medium, short. Hey, Don't push. If you want to be the best of the best, you need to be able to perform in, in every area. Stop. 
That's right, uppercut from Fedorov. Fedorov oh. definitely seems to have the better punch variety. Seems to be a little, a little bit more sure of himself as well. Referee possibly got that wrong there. I don't think Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan was holding. I think Hasanov was actually trying to get his hands free to look room, look for room to work. But Guys, not happy with each other there. Stop. 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 Head up, uh, Russia. Box. Watch your head. Box. Stop. Push a goal over. Box. Well, the referee's been very, very busy here. Break. Just due to the fact that I think both guys have got relatively similar styles and they're both Again, so many times tonight, I think every contest tonight almost has been an orthodox boxer against a southpaw boxer. Sometimes they make for fantastic contests, sometimes they clash because styles are similar and they get tangled up a lot and it becomes a messy affair and this is kind of what happened, what's happened here, even relating to the fact that both, both guys are very, very high level technical boxers. The styles are just clashing to the point where neither can really get a foothold on the contest. And they just seem to be clashing a lot, which is resulting in, you know, a lot of, uh, lot of holding, uh, a lot of messy work. And that's to happen. It can sometimes be, be almost 
impossible to break that. Еще три раунда тебе давали. Сейчас я не знаю, какой раунд. Три раунда ты выиграл, там давали тебе. Помашите. Сейчас я прогресс. Да, нет. Right hook there. From Hasanov. He picked that shot very well. Landed on a couple of cases. I would probably sway towards um, Hasanov in that round. Этот раунд, я не знаю, но ты где-то на хапу ударов. Just seem to be slightly more accurate. Hey, watch your head, watch your head, guys. Watch your head, guys. Break! Again, I don't understand Russian. But I would assume that Fedorov's corner has told him that he has to pick things up a little bit, that he possibly lost the fourth round, and that he has to try and get a foothold back in this contest again. I think that they would much prefer him to box from, from long range. The referee must be so tired of saying, Russia, no holding. Break! Well, both guys have been very guilty of holding. Again, due to the styles and the fact, the fact also that I think that they're a little bit unsure on how to fight up close. Stop! Just not getting the room to let their hands go due to the, the consistent entanglement in both guys' arms. Again, not the prettiest contest to watch, despite the fact that both these guys are world-class operators. Styles just sometimes don't blend. Really, really famous saying in boxing, styles make fights. And on this occasion, both these guys' styles are not making for a great fight. Fedorov trying to get on some really quick shots before the entanglement happened there, which is a pretty smart tactic. Hey, break! In reality. Stop! Hey, when I say break, okay? Box. Hey, 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 just a boxing, just a boxing. Russia, hey, hey, Azerbaijan, Russia, head up, box. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 stop! Well, the referee had a very, very, very busy uh, contest there. And you could say that he worked every bit as hard as both the competitors there. Да, 
事な切符はい大事な切符どうも。ラシア Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both boxers. We go to your judges' scorecards where we have a split decision. For your winner, in the gold corner, representing Russia, Pavel Fedorov. Well, really, I think Fedorov probably stole, not stole the fight, but nipped that contest due to his cleaner shots, his, his better level of activity. He seemed to control the contest a little bit more than Hasanov, who put up a great display. Well, it was a very, very messy affair. Um, the referee was very, very busy. Um, but you can see the quality of both men just... A lot to learn in terms of inside fighting. You know, they uh, when they tangled up, they were very, very rarely worked very hard inside. Um, and one of the scrappier contests we've seen tonight, to say the least. But you know, when you've got two world-class high operators at this level, um, and their styles clash, sometimes there's not that much that you can do about that. Both these guys could look spectacular against other opposition, but against each other tonight, it just didn't make for a great contest. They just clashed a little bit, but still, this is part of the sport. Ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce the next contest, let me please remind you of our great sponsors tonight, Ben Boom Company, Gold Caravan, and My Group. And we are now ready for our next contest. It is five three-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. So please welcome first into the black corner from Armenia, Narek Manasaya. Welcome his opponent going into the gold corner from Italy, Aziz Abes Mohidi.
Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is five three-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Your officials, your referee from Argentina, Roberto Servin. Your judges at ringside from England, Hungary, Afghanistan, Italy, and the Czech Republic. And now it's time to meet the boxers. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the black corner, weighing in 91.55 kilograms, his record, 31 wins, 20 defeats, seven of his wins come by way of knockout. He is an IBA World Championship bronze medalist. Please welcome from Armenia, Narek Manessian. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the gold corner, weighing in at 91.15 kilograms, his record. 53 wins against only 14 defeats. He is a two-time IBA World Championships silver medalist representing Italy. Please welcome Aziz Abes Mohidi. Okay, gentlemen. Head up, no hold it, no low blow. Okay, take her. Good luck. Go, go, go. Holding, not holding. Separate, separate. Oh no? Separate, separate. Break! No, 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 no. No turn, no turn. Not holding, not holding, not holding. Not holding. Separate. Break! Oh, break. Separate. Separate. A bit rough house tactics here from Manassian. Medine seems like he wants to just stay out of distance and control the pace with a jab and counter punching. He doesn't want to get involved in a rough house fight here. Don't push, don't push. needs to be careful when he's leaving the exchanges. His hands are a little bit low. Has to watch it. He doesn't run into something. Box. Needs to stay focused, keep his composure all the time. Big lads this size, you know, one shot can change the dynamics of a contest quite quickly. Don't push, don't push. You can clearly see right off Stop. the bat the tactics of both fighters. Separate, separate. Don't push, don't push. Break! Separate. Stop! Stop, stop. Break. Break. Box. Stop! Stop. 
Well, if they act to foster him there, then you can clearly see the tactics that both boxers would like to implement. Muhadin preferring to move, use his feet and his legs, keep his shots long, hoping that Manassian will run into some counter punches. Manassian trying to swarm Muhadin and make it a cruel and nasty fight because he's that's probably the only chance that he has based on his physical attributes a little bit of success there I think Manassian's corner will probably be telling him to force the action and back Muhadin up and make it a, make it a rough contest and try and drag the the taller, more technical, more athletic Italian lad into a, a rough, tough fight. Wait. No turn. Okay? No turn. Box! Hold, no holding, no holding. No holding. Break! Break. Separate. Mahudin for his size and mass certainly has very, very light feet. Plenty bounce on his step. Very, very good mover. Don't push, don't push, don't push. Stop, 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 separate. Separate. Don't push, don't push. No, no, don't push. Get up. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop! Don't push. Box! Don't slap, don't slap. Separate, separate, separate. Get up, get up, no, hold, no, hold. Stop, 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 don't push, don't push, don't push. Break! Armenia, no holding, no holding, no holding. No holding, separate. Stop! Stop. You, don't turn. You, look at me. Okay, no? Box! Break! Separate. Very, very impressive movement from Muhuddin. Stop! You, no resting. Box! Box! Don't push, don't push. Separate, separate. Separate. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop! Hey, stop, no, 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 stop, stop. Time. You, pay attention, okay? You, pay attention. Box! Oh, oh. <laughs> Very good to see mutual respect. Nice, nice, nice. Still, I'm not 
No, 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 don't push, don't push, don't push. Not holding. Again, Moody maintaining this brilliant footwork. He's uh, so light footed for such a big guy. No, no, no. Italia, no, no holding, no holding. Separate. Don't push, don't push, don't push. Manassian having little bouts of success, but nothing enough to unsettle Muhadin or take him out of his rhythm. No holding, Italia. Holding. Don't push, Armenia. Don't really. <laughs> the referee uh, calling both boxers by their, by their country. <laughs> makes a lot of sense. Some of the names can separate, be separate, quite separate. difficult to pronounce. No holding. Break. Separate. Separate. Stop. 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 Break. Yep, I need to get Break. in between these guys. No, 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 don't push. Don't push, don't push, don't push. Separate. And that's in certainly very, very rough and tough. No holding, no holding. Trying to drag Muhadin into a, into a war. Separate. He wants to stop him from moving. He wants Break. to really get him to plant his feet and trade off with him. Step back, step but Muhadin's smart. Step back. Using his feet work, his range, his distance. Stop. Stop. You, no holding. Okay? Okay. Okay. No. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. It's quite no holding. Okay. difficult in these circumstances to no actually Box. judge who is doing the most holding because you know, when you've got one guy who wants to box at long range and another guy who wants to get close, Maraud is taller, quicker moving opponent. They are going to come into, you know, clinch situations. So it's very, very difficult to determine who is doing the holding. In this session, you would think that Manassian is the one who wants to work inside. So the referees would probably lean more towards um, Manassian in terms of uh, penalisation. Sorry, the other way, Muhadin in terms of penalisation because Manassian seems to be the one who, when he gets close, does want to work. But of course, Muhadin having the, the advantages and height, reach, and that fantastic feet work wants to keep the box on long. Nothing landing flush and clean in the trade-offs there. Manassian forcing his way forward, Muhadin trying to keep him at distance and fence him off really. Let's go. 
Good start from Herdin here. Very, very good footwork. Good shots from Herdin on the break there as well. Yeah, I think we're seeing another bit of a clash of styles here as well. Like we did previously with Fedorov. And Hasanov from Armenia, they just seem to, their styles seem to clash. And like I said before, this, these things do happen. When you have two drastically con contrasting styles, especially an orthodox boxer against a southpaw, it can normally make for a classic, or it can make for quite a, a difficult contest to watch for the fans and for the referee to officiate. Right hand there. I'm going to ask him. 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 I'm to We are in the fifth round now, and Muhadin really impressively has maintained this fleet-footed style throughout, which can't be easy for a, a gentleman of his size. Oh, 
but this has been a rough, tough affair. Manassin's distance just not quite what it should be, just really shutting himself down there. He's not getting the room to get his punches off effectively. And Muhadeen's footwork is so good as well. The Manassin's having a really difficult time stylistically. Shutting Muhadeen down. I think that Muhadeen has been quite hockey and vocal throughout, and I think that's <laughs> maybe been Manassian a little bit worse and possibly affected his his style here, and maybe even maybe even his tactical approach because he's uh, almost seems like he's fighting out of frustration and anger a little bit. And that's, that's good tactics. That's good tactics on part of Mahadeen. Well, Muhadeen finished there with the arm aloft, smiling, quite convinced that he's done enough to pick up that victory. Certainly a mass score card here. I've certainly got Muhadeen ahead. Although it wasn't the prettiest contest to watch, I think we can probably all agree that Muhadeen has more than definitely done enough. Especially in terms of cleaner punches, I think that he's, uh, he's definitely done enough to pick up this victory here. Ladies and gentlemen, before I announce the winner of this contest, let me please welcome the IBA General Secretary, Chris Roberts, OBE, to present the ceremonial certificates to both boxers. And at the end of the bout, we go to the judges' scorecards, where we have a unanimous decision for your winner. In the gold corner from Italy, Aziz. Abedi Mohidin. The winner there for sure.
Dennis Bartos from the Czech Republic. Ready to go here against Hugo Mikalev. Ladies and gentlemen, before I announce our final contest of the evening, let me please remind you of our fantastic sponsors, Bed Boom Company, Gold Caravan, and My Group. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our final contest of the evening. It's six three-minute rounds in the super welterweight division. And now, please welcome to the ring, he will go into the gold corner from the Czech Republic, Dennis Bartos. opponent going into the black corner from right here in Monaco. Please welcome Hugo Michele. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is six three-minute rounds in the super welterweight division. Your officials for the bout, referee Stefan Nicolo, your judges at ringside, Jean Robert Lane, Michel Maxuita, and Andre Bal Yasso. And now it's time to meet the boxers introducing to you first. Fighting out of the gold corner, he weighed in at 63.8 kilograms. His record, 12 wins, 7 defeats. 8 of his 12 wins come by way of knockout. He comes from Rakovnik in the Czech Republic. Please welcome Dennis Bar. And his 
opponent across the ring, fighting out of the black corner. He weighed in at 64.15 kilograms. He comes to the ring with a perfect professional record. Seven wins, no defeats. He fights out of right here in Monaco. Please welcome the Fresh Prince of Monaco, Hugo. Become for your head, no holding, no road rule, no right to punch, and protect yourself all time. Check your hands. Nice attack from, from Mika left there. This punch as well. Warding. Artos is feeling these punches. Mika left, obvious height, height and reach advantages here. And already it looks like there's a power advantage. Hand speed looks good. Nice job. Nice snappy jab using different angles for the jab as well. Nice right hand to the body. Be careful you are there, okay? Box. Fantastic start from Mikalev here. Run. Oh, fantastic Three. combination of brilliant stuff from Mikalev. Six. Seven, eight, nine, out! Great performance for Mikkel, fantastic punch for A. Steady pressure, he brushed his work. He just shot some quick of the But the one who finish, very, very impressive. It's going to be here for Monaco tonight. After a performance like that. <laughs> Congratulations to Bartos. Czech Republic are a very good boxing nation, but he was totally fast and overpowered here. The right hand to the body really felt like the Bastos. He just never recovered from that body shot. Just right behind the left elbow on the soft room. Plenty of power. Uh, very, very well. And a great, I tell you, one thing for the Finnish Prince.
Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for both boxers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by first round knockout, the Fresh Prince of Monaco, Hugo Micali! you a very very safe journey thank you for your attendance and see you next time